हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज शगुन वार्षणे एंड टूडे आई एल बी टीचिंग हीट ट्रांसफर एंड हीट ट्रांसफर इज अ सब्जेक्ट विच इज इन द कोर्स ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग एंड इट इज अ वेरी वेरी सिंपल सब्जेक्ट नॉट वेरी टफ क्वेश्चन आर आस्ट इन ई एस सी एंड गेट एंड द वेटेज इज अबाउट फोर टू फाइव मार्क्स इन गेट एवरी ईयर फोर टू फाइव मार्क्स ऑफ क्वेश्चन आर आस्ट सो टूडे आई विल सिंपली स्टार्ट विथ the basics of heat transfer now if i talk about heat transfer and thermodynamics what exactly is the difference between them we have thermodynamics and we have heat transfer now in case of thermodynamics we simply deal with the change in the system from one equilibrium state to other equilibrium state but in case of heat transfer we are not only concerned with the change in the system rather we are concerned with the rate of change of system from one to another equilibrium state okay so in case of heat transfer we are also concerned about the rate of change of the system at what rate the system is changing with respect to time in order to obtain one equilibrium state from another equilibrium state whereas in case of thermodynamics we are only concerned about the change in the system from one equilibrium state to another equilibrium state so this is a very basic question which is generally asked in the various interviews of psus and even in the esc and sometimes in the gate also that what is the basic difference between thermodynamics and heat transfer now if we look at the zeroth law of thermodynamics the zeroth law of thermodynamics is mainly a law of equilibrium this is actually the short form for equilibrium then first law of thermodynamics is mainly for the conservation of of energy all right and if we talk about the second law of thermodynamics this law has two statements that is clausius statement and kelvin planck statement the kelvin planck statement is mainly given with respect to the heat engines whereas the clausius statement is mainly given for refrigerators and heat pumps now if we look at the zeroth law of thermodynamics if we look at the zeroth law of thermodynamics what actually this law states if there are three bodies say a b and c the zeroth law states that if a and c are in thermal equilibrium with each other b and c are also in thermal equilibrium with each other then a and b will also be in thermal equilibrium with each other this is actually the zeroth law of thermodynamics now from the zeroth law of thermodynamics one thing can be understood that the heat flow the flow of heat will take place from one body to another until and unless the equilibrium is maintained this equilibrium is called as thermal equilibrium thermal equilibrium simply means that when the heat is flowing from the body a to the body b it means that the temperature of a is greater than the temperature of b then only the transfer of heat is taking place between a and b and if the temperature of a becomes equal to the temperature of b then no heat 
ट्रांसफर टेक्स प्लेस वेन द टेम्परेचर ऑफ बोथ द बॉडीज बिकम सेम देन देर विल बी नो ट्रांसफर ऑफ हीट देन वी विल से दैट इट हैज अचीव द थर्मल इक्विलिब्रियम ओके नाउ वी हैव ऑब्जर्व दैट देर इज अ ट्रांसफर ऑफ हीट हियर वी हैव ट्रांसफर ऑफ हीट वाई बिकॉज दे आर इन डिफरेंट थर्मल स्टेट्स डिफरेंट इक्लिब्रियम स्टेट्स एंड इन ऑर्डर टू अचीव इक्लिब्रियम हीट विल फ्लो टिल बोथ द बॉडीज विल अचीव द सेम टेम्परेचर now if we talk about modes of heat transfer we will not talk about modes of heat transfer now as we have all studied this basic thing in the very early classes that there are mainly three modes of heat transfer one of them is conduction other we have convection then we have radiation so there are mainly three methods or modes by which the heat transfer can take place one of them is conduction the other one is convection and one is radiation now if we talk about conduction say say we have taken a rod right we have taken a metallic rod this rod is made of metal and we are heating this one end of the rod we are heating this one end of the rod so what will we be observed after some time after some time we will observe that the heat has been transferred from the end a to the end b and it will be difficult for you to hold this end what is the reason heat is being transferred by a mode called as conduction heat is being transferred by means of conduction now since this was a metallic rod this is a metallic rod so in case of metals the conduction mainly occurs by two phenomena one is free electron transfer and the other is lattice molecular vibrations lattice molecular vibrations now since in case of metals there is an abundance of free electrons so these free electrons can carry the electricity as well as heat from one point to the other and free electron heat transfer is about how much it is about 70% of the total heat transfer whereas we all know that when energy is being supplied this energy is being absorbed by the molecules and they start to vibrate with very strong and high amplitude vibrations in doing so they collide with the neighboring molecules and supply the energy to them so this is the lattice molecular vibration and it accounts for about 30% of the total heat transfer so we can see that the majority of the heat is being transferred in case of conduction by means of free electron transfer now if we talk about thermal conductivity then if we take the example of silver that is ag ag is the best conductor of heat it is actually the best conductor of heat but since it is very costly silver is not used actually it is used as an ornamental metal orna mental metal it is used as an ornamental metal it is not used in for making heat conducting wires because it is quite costly all right we also have aluminium we have copper aluminium also has a very good thermal conductivity and so as copper but copper is a little bit costly so we generally prefer aluminium for making conducting wires and conducting equipments okay now conduction if we look at if we look at the word conduction then in case of conduction it mainly occurs in case of solids it mainly occurs in case of solids due to the temperature difference by molecular lattice vibration it is because of the temperature difference and this temperature difference is being created by means of two factors that is electron transfer 
and molecular vibrations all right this temperature difference is mainly occurring because of the two factors electron transfer and molecular vibration okay now there is an exception there is an exception for diamond there is an exception for diamond diamond has a very high thermal conductivity diamond has a very high thermal conductivity of about 2300 watts per meter kelvin and it is about five times as that of silver it is about five times as compared to silver but since diamond is more costlier as compared to silver so we are not using diamond you cannot expect government to use diamond wires and you know and conduct electricity to your homes that is practically not possible okay so diamond actually has very high thermal conductivity as well as electrical conductivity also diamond is a very good conductor of heat as well as electricity all right now if we talk about non metals non metals also have certain conductivity now we will classify these non metals mainly into two categories one of them is crystalline one of them is crystalline and the other is amorphous amorphous means in the form of a powder and crystalline means they have orderly arrangement of molecules for example the molecules are arranged in in a very proper manner and in case of amorphous we have what we have voids voids or empty spaces now because of the presence of these voids on vibration this molecule will not be able to transfer its energy to the neighboring molecule and hence we will see that there is no heat transfer in case of amorphous metals amorphous non metals all right now we will come to the word thermal conductivity conductivity so from the word itself we can find out that thermal means heat conductivity means ability to conduct something so thermal conductivity may be defined as it is the property of the material to conduct heat actually it is a thermo physical property of the material it is actually a thermo physical property of the material all right thermo physical property of the material and this is called as thermal conductivity represented by the symbol small k okay so if we talk about metals metals generally have very high thermal conductivity whereas insulators if we talk about insulators they have very less thermal conductivity as compared to the metals insulators generally include air glass wool asbestos etc okay so air glass wool asbestos etc are generally insulators of thermal energy now we have already talked about solids now if we talk about gases if we talk about thermal conduction in case of gases for example if we have two plates such that the upper plate is at a temperature t1 and below this lower plate is at a temperature t2 such that t1 is greater than t2 okay t1 is greater than t2 then there will be a transfer of heat from the higher temperature body to the lower temperature body that means from top to bottom heat transfer will take place now the molecules of the gases which are near to the high temperature plate will absorb the energy or will get energized and on being getting energized they will now travel towards the low energy plate okay they will now travel towards the low energy plate and if we look at the kinetic theory of matter if we look at kinetic theory 
then from there we get C that is the RMS velocity of the molecules is directly proportional to the under root of temperature that is as the temperature increases as the RMS velocity is uh, we can see that RMS velocity is dependent on temperature as the temperature is increased the RMS velocity is also increased for the molecule okay now there is some high energy molecule and here we have low energy molecule which is near to the plate T2 and which is near to the plate T1. Now when this high molecule energy molecule will approach towards this low energy molecule there will be a collision and upon collision this molecule will transfer its energy to the low energy molecule and that is how the energy is being transferred from one molecule to the other and this phenomena is generally conduction in case of gases. So conduction is a type of heat transfer which takes place in solids, liquids as well as in gases. It occurs in all the three states of matter. Now if we compare the thermal conductivity of solids, liquids and gases then we will conclude that thermal conductivity of gases is least among all the three. The reason is the molecular separation between gases is very large so it is very difficult to transfer the energy from one molecule to the other by means of lattice vibrations. So gases are generally bad conductors of heat. Gases are generally bad conductors of heat okay now for example if we have a graph such that here we take the thermal conductivity and here we take temperature then this is air this is helium and this is hydrogen so this is this graph is for air this graph is for helium and this is for hydrogen. We see that the slope is maximum in case of hydrogen. Then helium, it is less as compared to hydrogen and the least is case in case of air. So one thing uh, is to be noted here that conduction can also take place through molecular momentum transfer. Momentum transfer that is one molecule which is moving at a very high speed having high energy will collide with the other molecule and hence it will transfer its energy to the neighboring or the collide. Now as the temperature is increased when the temperature is increased then thermal conductivity of the gases will increase the reason why on increasing the temperature the molecules will get energized and there will be a heat transfer by means of molecular momentum transfer since the momentum increases on increasing the temperature as their velocity is increasing so thermal conductivity also increases next is the kinematic viscosity of the gas it also increases because in the chapter of fluid mechanics we will study that mu of the gases is directly proportional to the under root of temperature it is directly proportional to temperature and we know that density definitely decreases on increasing the temperature. The specific heat increases on increasing the temperature and gamma which is the ratio of Cp upon Cv this also decreases. Gamma is decreasing. Now uh, if we talk about mercury, if we talk about mercury it is a very good conductor of heat in liquid form. We know that mercury at room temperature exists in the liquid form and it has been found that mercury is a very good thermal, thermal conducting material in its liquid form and generally it has highest thermal conductivity. It has highest thermal conductivity. So these one marks questions can also be asked in the examinations and we also know that mercury is also used as a thermometric liquid. 
the reason is due to its high thermal conductivity low vapor pressure very good volume expansion with heating it has high thermal conductivity low vapor pressure of mercury and very good volume expansion of mercury so this was all the basics about conduction